and welcome to another Broken Meeple review and this one is a Kickstarter that I've recently picked up for Valley of the Kings, the premium edition. Now, this isn't exactly a new game that I've uh, talked about, you know, I've mentioned it plenty of times on my top 100 and in passing on Twitter and Facebook, but Valley of the Kings is one of those deck builders which I never got a chance to review. I was always like, you know, I, I never got round to reviewing it as an old game, it just kept appearing on top 10 lists. So I figured this would be a good time to not only review this premium edition as a whole, but also go over why I like Valley of the King so much. Yeah, spoiler alert, I like the game. You know, if you've kept up to date with my uh, show, my podcast, my Tap 100, you know I love Valley of the Kings. Question is, did it really need this jumbo premium edition? Does it justify the cost or was it a waste of money? We'll find out in a minute. But Valley of the Kings, I have had on my shelf for a long time. And this is, well, yeah, a bit of a comparison to show in there. This holds two expansions, so does this, but uh, one is clearly bigger than the other. This was everything unsleeved in one box. It was a very portable deck builder. You know, now it's in this jumbo version with some major cosmetic upgrades. The question is, is it worth it? So what are the Valley of the Kings in general? Well, Valley of the Kings is what I like to call a pure deck builder. I have this kind of, niggling irk, pet peeve if you will, where some game sort of goes, oh yeah, well this is an area control card management game about pushing cubes. Oh, but there's deck building in it. Yay, you like deck building, right? No, I like deck builders as deck builders, not when you just shove it in as another mechanic where it's pointless and unnecessary. Oh, great, Western Trail. But you know, it. I love it as a pure one. Valley of the Kings is outright pure deck building. What's happening is, well, funny enough, you're trying to get points. Of course! But you're doing it by collecting sets. You're essentially a pharaoh. You're building up your tomb full of trinkets and items and all sorts of weird stuff in there, you know, to prepare for your burial. It's what they did. You know, they were buried with a ton of riches and stuff. I mean, the richest funerals in the world. But the idea is, is that you're collecting these cards from a pyramid setting, a one card, two cards, free cards, and you can only buy from the base, and as you buy these cards, the pyramid, pyramid crumbles into the different spaces and then refills from a deck. But these cards are multi-use, a mechanic I really love. You know, the cards basically are used for one of three things. Firstly, you can use it as a money value to buy more cards, standard kind of dominion S deck building. You can use it for its special ability, of which all the different cards have a unique special ability on them. Or you can do what's called Entomb. Entomb is an action where you place the card out of your deck and in this side little tableau called your tomb. Well, why would you do that? Because there's the neat twist of this game. The object of the game is to get the most points. You do it by collecting the sets. There's a different amount of cards in each particular set and you use several sets in the game and if you get the expansions, you can basically you, you know, mix and match the sets to your heart's content. But you don't score the cards in your deck like a lot of other games do, like Dominion and Marvel Legendary and stuff. You know, here, you only score the cards in your tomb. So as you're playing the game and collecting more cards and trying to complete the set, you also have to balance your purchases with having a decent sized deck that you can work with, you know, one that either draws a lot of cards or one that's quite small so you get your good cards out early, but you've also got to balance it with entombing cards. You only get to do it once as a freebie each round. You might want to find some cards that allow you to do it quicker or at a cost, but if you don't do it quick enough, then the game will get to its end point and you won't have had enough time to entomb enough cards to score enough points. So you have to be constantly thinking, that card has got high money value or I love that ability, but I need it in the tomb at some point. When's a good time to put it in? And you have to decide, you know, when's the time you're gonna sacrifice that card ability to get the points? Because it's probably doing good for you either way. And it's just this cool, like, twist on deck building, which I haven't seen in any other game, actually. As far as I'm aware, every other deck builder requires you to get stuff in your deck and you score for that. But to have this kind of side tableau of cards that you have to empty your deck into to get points, that's a nice, neat little twist. I mean, Dominion, you get those province cards and they go in your deck and they score while they're in your deck. They're kind of like dead draws. Well, here, you don't really have a dead draw as such because every card is useful for something but you're going to need to put it in the dead pile effectively at some point. But when do you do it? And the game has a bit of a crescendo effect. It starts off relatively slow, relatively slow, and then snowballs like crazy when you get sort of past the halfway mark because your decks are better, you're able to do more, you're able to do buy more cards, and suddenly it's like, oh, Christ, did I work a bit late? Um, I need in tune cards now. Uh, oh, wait, I don't have many. Um, can I buy any more? Uh, I need some now. You know, it, it, it does... 
It feels very different to a lot of deck builders, but it's just got a lot of stuff I like. You know, multi-use cards, love it. A unique, innovative twist on deck building. Great. I mean, this was from a day and age. When was this made, actually? Good question. Uh, 2016. So actually not that old. Oh, wait, though. No, this is the um, expansion. Uh, I try to think when this game was made. Um, I got a feeling it was 2011, but I'll double check and I'll put it on the screen. But it, it was a fair few years old. And, you know, this was from a time and age when innovation was actually a bit more prominent in games. Nowadays, I see the same stuff come out all the time. So... As a deck builder itself, it plays very well. You know, it's a solid game. If you love deck builders, looks great. You know, even the small card game version is great. Portable, has great looking cards. It is a fantastic, like, deck builder. And spoiler alert, I gave it a 10. It is really one of my favorite games of all time. Now, with that out of the way, this premium edition. What does it do? Well, besides making the box ridiculously big, it essentially gives you a major cosmetic upgrade. You've now got two books in there, one the main rulebook and a player's guide. The idea is, is that this incorporates both expansions as well as maybe a few extra little bonus cards in there as well. But you now have a comprehensive, you know, FAQ list of every single card that appears in the game. You have various solo modes that you can try, you know, a solitaire style mode and a dummy player mode. I have tried both. The dummy player is okay, I kind of prefer the solitaire mode really, but this isn't a game I tend to play solitaire anyway, it's certainly not compared to a lot of other solitaire games I've got. But, you know, it's an easy game to pick up, I mean, yes, the hardest bit that stops it being like a gateway level game is that you've got these different card abilities everywhere. But, you know, for anybody who's used to a deck builder, you shouldn't have much trouble picking this up and finding the chance to play. So what it does do is gives you... Too much space in the backs, <laughs> it has to be said. I mean, that's pretty much empty. The only thing that is in there is the tomb tiles, which are now represented by decent thick tiles, not just a card now, and what I have remaining in my sleeves. Yes, it comes with premium tarot size sleeves, tarot card sleeves, because the ones in the normal set are standard size. It's all cool. You can sort of see the information on them. It's pretty decent. Now, though, if I get a particular card out, because um, some of these dividers appear to have tried to fall over whilst I was doing that, uh, let's grab you, or whatever. Cards are now big, very big. These are huge. They've got a cool card back on the main with the Egyptian thing, but now the cards, I've got a lot of detail on them. And I'll put it on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. But, you know, you've got the cost clearly labeled. You've got the uh, victory points that is clearly labeled. You've got the, the card art with the color at the bottom. You've got the flavor text. You've got what number it is in the set. You've got the effect text in, you know, decent size lettering and that. It's a massive boom. I mean, I like the cards in the original fine, but having them in this size now, oh, I love it. And some people were kind of like, well, I didn't need a tarot size card. I was quite happy with this set. Well, yeah, granted. I don't think this game is going to replace, sorry, this edition is going to replace this. In fact, I'm still keeping this. You know, I like this, but I'm going to keep hold of this because occasionally I just need a portable deck builder. Well, you're going to lose the portability with this one. I mean, that's clearly seen. Whereas with this, I can keep this and go, you know what, I just need something to fill the bag pocket or whatever. Good, I'll put this one in there. So don't expect this to turn up on eBay anytime soon. But certainly the artwork is still the same artwork that it was before, but obviously blown up to tarot size, it now looks a lot more striking. But these cards are very good quality. They're, you know, they're very good sort of, very linen, sort of semi linen finished cards, but the sleeves are premium quality. They're very good sleeves and they will keep these protected without any trouble whatsoever. As well as having like the cards themselves, it comes with a set of quality dividers. So if I try and pull one out as an example, you got a lot of these, they tell you what cards are on there, it tells you what set it's from, it even tells you what expansion it's from. Very good dividers. I need more deck builders need to have this kind of thing. And you've got a little pointless first player marker, which you really did not care about. It's a like bust of Cleopatra's head or something. It's like, whoopee, who cared? But that's essentially what this premium edition does. It gives you some jumbo rule books with all the information you need to cover all the games, all the modes, and all the cards. Great. It comes with a, you know, pretty striking box. I mean, it's... The only slight flaw with it is because it's, like, full-on black and it was a Kickstarter, it was kind of, it's kind of easy to dent the box and have it show. Like, I can see two crease marks on the front of this just looking at it because it's solid black. The second, the second you put light on it, 
you can see the crease in it, and it's like, it's unavoidable, but, you know, it's one of those things. But otherwise, it's a striking box. The main thing I have a little bit of an irk about is the fact that it's got way too much spare space in here. You know, this is a game that I don't think is going to get more expansions. So, there's your cards. And to be fair, it doesn't need more expansions. There's plenty of cards in those two expansions, but could we have not had the game maybe, you know, the box maybe this big? And not bother with this? You know, I mean, this cubby hole for a tiny little head miniature? Not really needed. And I'm pretty sure I could have slotted these into a... Uh, you know, somehow into there and it would have just done fine. Why do I need all this? It just seems like a waste of space and a way to make the box bigger. So, not a big fan of that and I know that got quite a few complaints as well. I suppose maybe the one thing I could do with this, which is, um, well actually that kind of defeats the point. I was just thinking I could shove this in there, because it fits. I mean, I can put the original in there, fine, but then why would I take the original with me if I'm taking the big box? Well, that was pointless. Like I say, in terms of production quality, very good production quality. Love the cards, love the sleeves. I mean, if they didn't include sleeves, I'd be like, come on, what's premium about it? But, and love the, like, the replacement tomb tiles. It certainly is a very pretty production. And I like having this, you know, pretty giant rule book. Although, again, probably didn't need to be this giant. Although, one excuse that the box big, isn't it? But the rule book is easy to follow. I didn't find it hard to think. And it's got more pictorial examples than the small rule book does in the old one. So it's certainly easier, I think, to pick up and start playing this game compared to the previous one, including the solitaire modes. Now, the only other thing I'm not too big a fan of, Valley of the Kings was a two to four player game. Well, let's ignore solo mode. It was a two to four player game. It is fantastic at two players. It is 10 out of 10 at two players. It is pretty much 10 out of 10 at three players. Four, it's 10 at times, mostly nine at others. It drops because the downtime with having too many players in this can get a bit high as people are trying to think, oh God, what do I do with the abilities now? The pyramid looks like this. What am I going to do? Um, I could do that. Hang on, can I take that back? You know, AP players should stay the hell away from this deck builder. You are banned from playing this deck builder with me if you get AP problems. But four players I'm not as big of a fan of playing this with because of the downtime and the potential AP issues. Three players is great and two players is fantastic. And like I say, I'll play it solo mode and I love it to bits with that. This premium edition gives you enough starter card components to play up to six players. I cannot imagine what drugs I would have to be taking before I consider playing this with five or six players. What a lovely day! You know, AEG tried to do this with Love Letter. Remember the premium edition of Love Letter, which was originally a two to four player game, and it was a nice little filler, and then they premiumed pre it, it, it up. <laughs> I don't know how you could say that word like that, but... Uh, and they, they made it so, oh yeah, there's some extra cards and now you can play it with up to eight players. Who the hell enjoyed Love Letter with eight players? Suddenly this tiny little filler game turned into this like one hour monstrosity that would just never end. Oh, I hated it when it was five or eight, five or more players. It was like, no, oh, this game was a two to four player game. It should have stayed that way. Valley of the Kings is the same thing. It is a two to four player game and it should have stayed that way. Of course, fine. They put them in the box. Now I've got some spare starter cards or whatever. I have no intention of playing this five or six players. I mean, four is bad enough. Well, tell a lie, I have played this with um, like a full on six player game because people wanted to learn it. Oh God, <laughs> the downtime is a little bit ridiculous. Well, we're waiting. You know, I enjoyed my time with them and that, and I accepted that this was just going to be a game I was teaching them because I wanted to show off the game. I wanted to see, look, this is Valley of the Kings. You've not heard of this before? Seriously, play this game. And they enjoyed it, but they agreed with me. Six players was way, way too much. And like I say, I am not playing this with five or six players ever again. It is just too much. Don't increase your player count just to make more sales. It's not worth it. Take it away, Jeff Goldblum. But your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Yeah, what he said. You know, so, you know, it's it's kind of a mixed bag, though, because you're paying on 50 quid for this game. You know, 45 to 50 quid. It possibly even more, in fact, actually, when it hits full retail, because I think that was a slightly discounted price on Kickstarter anyway. So this is not a cheap game to buy in its premium form. Is it worth that extra cost, though? Now, bear in mind, you're getting the both expansions in there. Now, each of these uh, original ones, they cost usually about, say, 15 quid. They were quite 
cost effective actually, about 15 quid per set and they were standalone. So 15, 30, 45, I mean, you're talking, a, you could probably get it cheaper now if you buy it from AEG or it's on sale or somewhere, but you, you've got to be talking about 35 to 45 quid to get yourself this complete edition of Valley of the Kings unsleeved. You're paying about 10, 15 quid more than that and you're getting this premium set with gorgeous dividers, gorgeous cards and premium sleeves. You know, it kind of is kind of worth that money just for that cosmetic upgrade. Now, if you're not interested in tarot sized cards, then you might as well just stick with the base set because that's pretty much the main selling point here. Nice looking tarot cards with premium sleeves. You're certainly not buying it for the box because like I say, there's so much spare space in here, it's completely unnecessary. So I got this purely because I wanted bigger cards, fully sleeved in a box all together and nicely divided because you won't be able to organize your cards well in this, I can tell you that, but you know, it does its job pretty well. And like I say, I'm still gonna hang on to this. So back on the shelf you go, there you go. But all in all, I like Valley, well, I love Valley of the Kings. 10 out of 10, I love it as a deck builder. This premium set though, I'm a bit more tough love on this one because I kind of wanted maybe a little bit more than just simply the tarot sized cards with the sleeves. You know, and certainly if you're gonna give me that, then great, but you don't have to give me this giant box. It seems unnecessary for the box to be this big just so that you can make the rule book large. You know, this empty space is completely useless to me. Why is it there? You know, I don't care about having a little Cleopatra, a little head thing or something. It's not needed, so again, why is it there? It's, you know, these are small niggles, but when you think about the price you're paying and how much like, oh yeah, premium set would be good, it's, it's got a few little design oddities that I would have thought they would have taken out. But all in all, like I say, if you're a fan of Valley of the Kings and you want the cards to be big, gorgeous and tarot size and that, then this is definitely something worth picking up, uh, particularly if you haven't got the game already. As I said, it's not that much of a price increase over the small box version to get a nice shiny version, providing you have a means of storing it well. And um, I'm not sure I want to store this vertically either. That's another slight flaw. You know, you have to kind of keep it horizontal, really. But if you want a more portable version, then by all means, just pick up the other one. Frankly, as long as you're picking up Valley of the Kings for your collection, I don't really mind because then you've got the game. Fantastic. 10 out of 10 game. But for this, I'm kind of a bit more ho-hum. I kind of give it, I kind of give it overall, <sighs> compared to the old one, it's good, but that storage is a pain. I mean, I can give it a seven overall. It's, you know, I one, I feel that ergonomics are a bit of a downer here, but I do love these new cards. I do love the, like the extra solo mode, the dummy player that they threw in, which came off BGG. I love the fact that this is now easier to follow and has an index for all the cards, has all the different sets, what sets are on there, suggestions for what sets that you can use, easy way to score, you know, nice examples and I mean that's just the rule book you know the player guide it gives you like the entire card supplements solo player variants ways to make the game longer you know shorter if you want, why would you want to make it longer but you know suggested sets that you can use it's got a lot of good things for this I just think that some design oddities kind of get in the way and I have to admit the fact that the box is probably too big for what it needs to be is a major concern I mean if you're going to give us that load of empty space then yeah, better fill it up with something. You know, I want to see more cards. I want to see like another expansion set for this game with premium like sleeves and tarot sized cards so that I can actually put something in that space. Because otherwise, it's just taking up room on my shelf and uh, I'm not exactly uh, abundant with space right now, as you can imagine. So like I say, I still love this deck builder, fantastic. But whether you want this premium edition or not is really gonna depend on what you want from the game. Bigger, is bigger better for you, or is more and portable better for you? Take your pick, as long as you get the game, I don't mind. So that's it for me for Valley of the Kings Premium Edition. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review, and regardless of whether you go big or small, doesn't matter, it's still only a game. Take care, and I'll see you soon.